So hello there again. We're going to come back to this idea of transformations a little farther and think about what transformations do to certain vectors here. Now we want to think of transformations, remember, as uh, there are functions, but we want to think of them as actions or movements that we perform upon R2 or R3 or R whatever. Let's take a look at this one in particular just as a good example. This is a transformation that goes from R2 to R2 and I'm going to flip uh, all of R2 over the y-axis. Flip over the y-axis. Okay, so let me just draw this over here and I'm going to draw a, uh, here's my y-axis right there, there's my x-axis right here. Let's just think about what happens to certain vectors as we move through this. So some vectors really move out of place. Uh, let me put some hash marks here. Let's call that 1 and negative 1 and plus 1. And I want to draw the vector, uh, boy that's terrible, but we're pretend that's actually a straight line there, the vector 1, 1. So what is the transformation of 1, 1? What is its image under this transformation? Well, I'd flip it over the y-axis, so that is here. Doing a little bit better job drawing uh, the second one than I did the first one. So the transformation of 1, 1 ends up over here. So it really moves into sort of a very different sort of place, a very different sort of direction uh, under this transformation. But now there are a few other vectors that uh, don't really move much at all. Like, for example, take a look at the vector. I think you can see this right here. Here we go. That's the vector 0, 1. Okay, now it is already on the y-axis. So if I were to draw its transformation, it would just look exactly like itself. If you flip something over, if we're flipping over the y-axis, something that's on the y-axis isn't going to move anywhere. So this is actually equal to its own transformation. In other words, the transformation doesn't move it at all. So some vectors are getting moved pretty drastically. Some are not getting moved at all. Some are getting moved, but into places that are pretty much the same as they started. Take a look at 1, 0, this guy right there, 1, 0. Now its transformation moves it, but all it does is scale it. It uh, changes its direction. So this is a transformation of 1, 0. Of course, that's just equal to negative 1, 0. The thing to point out, though, is that uh, this transformation didn't really move it in the same sense that it moved this vector. This vector moved all the way over to here uh, in a totally different direction. This vector here, 1, 0, was merely rescaled in place. So we have some vectors that are undergoing significant movement and changes of direction, and some that are being either left alone entirely or simply rescaled in the same place along the same line that they originally had. Notice, too, there are other vectors that are also scaled in place. Uh, for example, if I draw the vector, since that's all I wanted to do, if I draw the vector 2, 0. Okay, so it's just uh, the same as vector 1, 0, except it's twice as long, so 2, 0. Okay, its transformation, if I flip it all the way over the y-axis, is just going to be this guy over here, which uh, there is the transformation of 2, 0. And as you see, that is just merely rescaling it again. So it's, that's what I mean by rescaled in place. Uh, the transformation of 1, 0 uh, is just a scalar multiple, negative 1 times the, the thing I plug in, 1, 0. And the same thing is true for 2, 0. And really anything along the x-axis, any vector that sits on the x-axis, uh, is going to be rescaled in place by this particular transformation using a factor of negative 1. And uh, if I'm thinking about uh, vectors that are along the y-axis, then uh, they are technically rescaled in place too with a factor of 1. And if I take another vector, say, uh, on the y-axis, say uh, this thing, again, showing my terrible drawing skills, uh, 0, negative 2, okay, its transformation, if I flip it along the y-axis, does absolutely nothing. So the transformation of 0, negative 2, uh, is itself, but I'm going to write it as 1 times 0, 2, okay? Um, so anything along the y-axis, any vector that sits on the y-axis is going to be quote-unquote rescaled in its place because it's not going to move at all. Any vector on the x-axis is going to be rescaled by a factor of negative 1. But anywhere else in, the R, in R2, in the plane here, the vector is really going to move and it's not just going to be a rescaling uh, operation that takes place. So here's a question we might want to ask. If I have a linear transformation that goes from R2 to R2 or from any size real space I want to any other size, which vectors in R2 or whatever are going to be rescaled in place like we see here? Uh, this is important because these transformations could be pretty uh, sophisticated and intricate movements of R2. Uh, what these vectors that end up getting scaled in place are, are things like fixed points. And the more things change under this transformation, certain vectors are sort of staying the same. And those vectors that are scaled in place are the ones that are staying the same. 
Well, uh, let me go over to a little lecture capture here and uh, put some terminology to this concept here. So the question we're talking about here again is if have a linear transformation t, which vectors in the domain of t are not actually moved out of place but rescaled in place? That means that the vector could be completely left alone by the transformation like 0, 1 was a minute ago or it could be stretched or shrunk, um, but only stretched or shrunk, only rescaled, and possibly reflected 180 degrees around like 1, 0 was, but not something like what 1, 1 was a moment ago, which was really moved out of place in a pretty significant way. Well, let's uh, try to translate this into something a little more algebraic. Remember that every tr linear transformation can be realized by matrix multiplication. Remember, we call that matrix A the uh, standard matrix of the transformation. So if we think of a transformation as matrix multiplication, this gets a little easier to work with. Uh, to say rescaled in place then means that when I take my x and multiply it by a, the matrix a, I don't get something totally different. I just get a scalar multiple of x. The little thing you see there to the left of the x is lambda, the lowercase Greek letter lambda, and that is a scalar. So a vector that is rescaled in place is just merely a scalar multiple of itself after being transformed, which means after being multiplied by that standard matrix A. So we have a word for this. Uh, we're going to call a vector x an eigenvector for the matrix A if it's one of these rescaled in place vectors, if ax equals lambda x for some scalar lambda. Uh, eigen uh, vector, the word eigen is a German word that means self, so it's like a self-reflected, self-transformed vector. And what we're going to do here for the rest of the screencast is show some matrices that represent linear transformations and ask whether or not certain vectors are eigenvectors of that matrix or not. How we actually find eigenvectors for a matrix is a subject for another screencast. So going back to the linear transformation that flips um, R2 around the y-axis. And this again is the, the y flip. Okay, remember that uh, we can think of this uh, matrix or this uh, linear transformation, rather, as multiplying by a matrix. Um, we saw that the standard matrix in an earlier screencast is built out of the images, the transformations, of the columns of the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So what goes here is the transformation of 1, 0. We saw that was negative 1, 0. And what goes here is the transformation of 0, 1. We saw that was 0, 1. So I'm wondering which vectors out there in R2 are such that when I multiply them by this matrix, we just get a scalar multiple of what we started with. Well, let's start with uh, vector V equals uh, 0, 1. Now we know this is going to be an eigenvector for this matrix. Let's call this matrix A. Let's take A times V, though, to see what happens. So A times V is, again, that's one, negative 1, 0, 0, 1 times v, and that's a 0, 1. Now let's just carry out this matrix multiplication. We know what we're going to get because we've seen the transformation at work, but let's carry this out anyway. This would be negative 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1, and that is 0. And the second entry here will be 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1, and that's 1. And so that's equal to a scalar, namely the number 1, times v. So therefore, what we get to conclude from here is that v over here is uh, an eigenvector. V is an eigenvector uh, for the matrix A that's up above. Because when I take A times V, I get a scalar multiple of V. Now there are some, uh, and uh, here's another eigenvector. Let's call this one W. And this is going to be, uh, let's take uh, 3, 0. Is 3, 0 an eigenvector for A? Well, one way to find out is to multiply uh, w times a. So again, a is the same matrix as above, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and I'm multiplying that times w, which is 3, 0. And so what are we going to get? I'm going to have negative 1 times 3 plus 0 times 0, that's negative 3, and then 0 times 3 plus 1 times 0, that's 0. And now this result is negative 1, negative 1, times w. So since a times w is equal to a scalar times w, that makes w an eigenvector for a as well. Now let's let's uh, do one more here. Let's call this vector u, and I'm just going to pick a vector out of thin air like 3, 7. Okay. Uh, is that an eigenvector for a? Well, let's find out. We can multiply a times u, and I'm going to get negative 1, 0, 0, 1. That's a multiplied by my u vector. That's 3, 7. And let's see what we get. 
Uh, if 3, 7 is an eigenvector for A, I should get some scalar multiple of 3, 7 here. Let's see what we really get. I get negative 1 times 3 plus 0 times 7. That's negative 3. And then I have 0 times 3 plus 1 times 7. That's plus 7. Now, that is actually not a scalar multiple of 3, 7. Um, the 3 changed to a negative 3, but the 7 state put. So this is not a scalar multiple, uh, not lambda times w for any scalar whatsoever. So that makes u uh, is not an eigenvector for A. So again, we can tell whether, given a matrix, which we might as well say given a transformation, I can tell whether um, a given vector is an eigenvector for that matrix or not simply by multiplying and seeing if I get a scalar multiple of what I started with. If I do, that vector is an eigenvector. If I don't, it isn't.